Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and you are tuning in to our Revelation Bible Study. We decided as a church to go through the entire book of Revelation, and then of course, uh, COVID hit, and so we're now forced to kind of move this study over to uh, YouTube and do it all online. And so you are joining us right in the middle of Revelation chapter 11, of course, you can go back and watch the previous chapter 11 study, or you can go back to the very beginning and start the whole thing over. Uh, it's up to you. It's great. Uh, every single one of these files is a couple of minutes, 10 minutes tops, and uh, be pretty easy to catch up should you decide to. Uh, Revelation 11, a lot of hopelessness. A lot of hopelessness. Feels it looks, it looks bad, right? It looks bad. God looks defeated. God sends uh, two witnesses to speak out against the Antichrist, and they're killed, they're defeated, and it looks like, you know, uh, God has lost the war, and everyone celebrates, everyone shouts, everyone cheers, they continue on with Christmas even, and they uh, have been left in the street, these two witnesses, haven't even been buried, just left in the street as a public spectacle. But then this happens, in verse 11, but after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. I, yeah, I'd say. It, you see these two people come back from the dead? Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies watched them. And at that hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is to come. How quickly the tides change. These two witnesses from God are killed and everyone celebrates. Everyone's happy. They feel like, oh, our problems are over. God is dead. And then these messengers come back to life. And it's not a trick. Right? It's, not a, it's not a movie special effect because they can hear God speak from heaven. Everyone hears it. And, and those two dead messengers, now resurrected, ascend into heaven. And as they're ascending into heaven, an earthquake hits and thousands of people die. And it says in verse 15, Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord, and of his Christ he shall reign forever and ever. Wow, if you're not on God's side, those are not the words you want to hear. This is basically victory from heaven shouting, this is it, this is the end. I mean, all that bad stuff before, that was just birth pains. Just This is the real thing. This is it. The rule of this world is over. And Jesus now rules the world. In verse 16, it says, the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God, fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. So the world already saw God's wrath, you know, with each of the opening of the seals. But now the 24 elders say, more is even coming. Verse 18 says, The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. Can you imagine? Not only did you just witness these two uh, uh, messengers go back to heaven, you hear voices from heaven say, this is it, this is the end. And then, and then God's uh, voices, the angels of heaven, everyone shouting in heaven, there's more coming. This is the end. You better, you better have everything ready to go. You, you, this is, it's like coming up that last clickety-clack on the roller coaster, and you have one more big downhill, and you know that this is the end. This is the end of the roller coaster. The ride is over, right? I remember hearing a story about a preacher who got up in front of his congregation, and he said, who wants to go to heaven? And everyone raised their hands. And then he said, uh, who wants to go to heaven today? Nobody raised their hands. 
right? We want to go to heaven, but not right now. These people who witness this event, who stand there on the final days, they don't have a choice. This is the end. Can you imagine hearing that voice and hearing that choir from heaven say that now is the time to be rewarded or judged? There's no going back. There's no second chance. There's no do-over. It's the last click, click, click on the way up the roller coaster and knowing that this is the one last hill before the very end and the ride is over. I think we all want to go to heaven. I, th- I do. I think we all do, no matter what, even if, even if you don't believe. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, he has made everything beautiful in its time and he has set eternity in the human heart. God has placed heaven in each of our hearts. I think the problem is we just all assume that we go there. I mean, you'll go to a a funeral and maybe it was a stranger, you don't even know the person, and you'll hear the pastor say that that, that, that the deceased is in a better place. How do we know? How do we know? Heaven is not the default. Sadly, Hell is the default. The reward for living on this earth without Christ in your life is punishment. And right now, about three people die every second, which means 180 people die every minute, which means 11,000 people die every hour. 250,000 people die every day and they either go to heaven or hell until this last day. Which is why it's called Judgment Day. The angel says, now is the time for reward or judgment. And that's it. It's, it's one place or the other. I said in the previous video that Revelation is the end of the story. We know how the story ends, so there's no need to worry. We know how it ends. We, we know exactly what to look forward to. So we know all of these things are coming. All of these events are coming. And if we're good stewards of the Bible, then we also know that sin separates us from God. Sin keeps us from God and none of us are perfect and none of us live up to the standard. We are all broken people. We are all hurting people. So the truth is, unless we address that problem, Unless we fix that problem of sin, heaven won't be our default when we die. Ask yourself if you're ready to hear those voices. If you're ready to hear those angels say, now is the time. Judgment or reward. Romans 10.9 tells us exactly what to do. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Belief and admission are the cornerstones of salvation. And if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's the Son of God, the Bible says the only thing you have left to do is just say it out loud. Confess it. You say it in a prayer, and you ask Jesus to be Lord of your life, to come into your heart, to have the Holy Spirit reign in you, and to spend the rest of your days in pursuit of his kingdom come and his will be done on earth. I hope this study of Revelation is eye-opening of not only what will take place, but also what's important. The things that are important, we can be easily distracted by this world. But as we can see from this book, this world is not going to last forever. In fact, the only thing on this world that will last forever is you. Decide. Make your choice where you are going to spend your forever. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.